From the developers who brought you Secretary with Guns and French Made with Swords comes Police with Leash. Astral Chain is Platinum Games' latest, critically acclaimed member of the village people. What dollar store Halloween costume will they give a weapon next? Leave your prediction in the comment section below. Also, from the developers who brought you Spooky Flashlight Tag and Slow Motion Alcoholic comes Control. Alt Delete because the computer's on fire. In Remedy Games' latest mind-bending shooter, you will question reality by asking, is this bullet time or frame rate drops? Either way, it will make you feel like Max Payne drunk. What do these two brand new games have in common? Absolutely nothing, but also everything, including a brother and sister with a mysterious connection to another dimension made of psychedelic rectangles called the Astral Plane, which is corrupting people by covering them in red boogers, and the player must utilize the powerful abilities they find there to explore new areas and close the gate to the upside down. That's why this video is Girlfriend Review's first ever double feature. Mm, yeah, double feature. Woo. But this isn't a review of Astral Chain or Control. This is a review of what it's like to live with someone who plays two major releases in one week. Let's start with Astral Chain. It has incredible graphics, totally unique combat, a room where you rescue cats, and yet I cannot recommend it as a backseat game. I'm sorry, I really wanted to like it. My boyfriend loves it, and I agree that it's a Nintendo Switch essential for action fans, but watching someone else play is half nap time, half incomprehensible chaos. Most of the missions start with 20 minutes to an hour of wandering around, just touching stuff, hoping to find bold red text that goes in your handy dandy. No! You are so right. So you can pass a pop quiz later. If you are looking for a good detective game, this isn't it. If you're looking for a Blue's Clues game, this is literally Blue's Clues. Even if you don't pay attention during the investigation phase, you can easily complete the test as long as you know basic grammar. Hmm, now what would a person put on their toast? Butter, loud noises, Christmas time, or toast? While skimming around the world for these keywords, you will also come across side objectives that are fun, but you've definitely done in other games. There's shoot the thingies, balance a thingy with motion controls, no. <gasps> organize thingies on a grid, and seriously, I must have watched my boyfriend pick up and recycle a hundred cans during his playthrough. Oh look, look, I oh, threw away wow. the trash. But the mechanic that truly killed the viewing experience for me is what can be described as mowing the lawn. Red matter crystals are dispersed throughout the entire game, and every mission keeps a score for cleanup rate. Careful! Be collecting boogers, baby. Can't stop the boogers. Oh. Ow! That means all the slow-paced filler content I just complained about is padded out even more by a loud, obnoxious collectathon. Even during the cinematic, high stakes, main plot driven sections of the game, my boyfriend would be like, hold up a minute. Who keeps flicking their boogers under the bed? And let's be honest, no one is buying Astral Chain for Blue's Clues and Sticky Buddy Simulator. <laughs> They're buying Astral Chain for the second half of every mission, the fun part. If you haven't yet experienced the amazing combat in this game, imagine Devil May Cry, Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, and the Fourth of July. Players control an anime character and an anime robot at the same time, while using the chain between them as a slingshot, lasso, and bungee cord. It's pretty freaking cool, but you know that I have a hard time with diarrhea Christmas lights and video games when there's just one character to keep track of. So after my boyfriend unlocked the first anime robot, I was like, This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. Eventually, he had five of these things, each with their own unique abilities and skill trees, plus tons of customizable attacks and stats. Yeah, it's awesome. You should totally play it. But guess what? I don't know what the heck I'm looking at. I miss the simpler times when Dante had motorcycles for arms and everything made sense. The second game my boyfriend played this week, I feel very differently about watching. Control is a beautiful, trippy, freakish, and rip-roaring action movie. Jesse Faden is the director of a secret government building who studies events and objects that defy reality and give her Jedi powers. What powers, you ask? I don't know, how about the power of flight? That do anything for you? It's levitation, Holmes. How about the power to kill a yak from 200 yards away? With mind bullets! That's telekinesis, Kyle. How about the power to move you? Actually, 
I don't know if this game will move you, because quantum physics confuses me, and so do dozens of fictional science words, and even though my boyfriend picked up every collectible he found, he never read any of them. So who now? Where now? That refrigerator is possessed by a giant one-night hole. What now? Whoa! What the butt? Whoa, hey, what's that do? I don't blame him, though, because look how much reading there is. And that was just research and records. There's also case files, correspondence, and we're only halfway through the game. Remedy, listen. If you give my boyfriend the ability to pull concrete out of the wall and hit a guy in the face with it using the force, stopping every 20 seconds to read an email about clogged toilets is not a priority. Have you tried adding Gwent or a claw machine? Regardless of being slightly lost, in the plot. I love this game. We've not done a whole lot of look at the booty shooties on this channel yet, but this is my favorite booty to look at so far. Jesse might be flying around the room, slamming into the ground, launching forklifts through the air, being high on mushrooms, and yet I always know what's happening and how my boyfriend is doing it. This clarity of gameplay is accompanied by well-paced, Metroidvania-esque exploration through a cold, emotionless facility that gave me the spooks. To top it all off, the visuals are insane, and it was our first experience ever with real-time ray tracing. If you're like me and don't know or care what that is, it basically means that developers went from barely being able to render a mirror to turning literally everything into a mirror. Wow, a reflection. Neato. And it makes characters look so realistic that I could swear they were cheesy live-action videos. Wonder Girl What is the secret to your power? 